everyone. Welcome to this episode of The Latest Thread. Um, as we look through the um, Facebook groups this week, we did notice one thing that stood out, and it's just, and it's not in any particular post. It was just kind of here and there, and people asking about using like minky back backings and just different unusual fabrics. And so we thought that might be a good thing because each of us have used a lot of different uh, materials to stitch on and as backing. So we thought we'd share our experience with those that maybe that can help you a little bit. Sharon, share, share sometimes. my screen. Okay, here we go. So pictures in no particular order, all kinds of fabrics, um, backings and fronts. This is a piece of satin, Kasha satin, which is kind of like a similar to a uh, jacket lining satin. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I will say one thing, don't make any mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> There's my first tip. Because like, as soon as you stitch something that those holes are permanent, and if you were to try to rip it out, I think it even damages the, the satin even more. Mm -hmm. But it was definitely fun to experiment on. Like, look at the sign that, that is there from that. It's, I like the... Uh, you know, I'm trying, I'm sorry, I'm trying to move my little <laughs> box of people <laughs> over. Uh, I have a question, Sharon, for the yeah, last one. Did yeah, you have to line that? Pardon me? Did you have to line that? I didn't. It was a small piece. I didn't find it was very stretchy. Um, but this is a small piece. It's only probably like 15 by 24 or something like that. So it wasn't very big. I was able to, I think I was able to base the whole thing <coughs> first so that it stayed, stayed in place. As there could be an issue with some of those fabrics, probably, possibly. Yeah, and I think that we have, um, somebody's got some pictures in here that has to do with some stabilizing, I think, that'll, yeah. that would help. Obviously, if you find that, that it's moving around too much, you might want to stabilize, but I didn't with this one. Okay, thanks. Yeah, welcome. This one's mine as well. It is a piece of leather nice. that only has paint on uh, certain parts of it. It has a, just an iridescent sheen um, you can see on the main design. And then the background mm -hmm. quilting where the feathers and the matchstick quilting is not painted at all. Um, and then there is some couching around the design and some little stones that you can't quite see in this picture. But um, I love the texture that you get from quilting with, with leather. It's, um, I find you actually get quite a bit. It's surprising. I thought that sheen was on the fabric. I didn't realize it was painted. Yeah, it's just an iridescent medium. Um, so it's pretty much clear, but just adds like a, like a almost a soft pearl sheen over top of what you put it on but you can totally see the difference between the, the the squares on the outside so yeah you can see the difference of the areas that are painted and that aren't that you can see how much more sheen they they get now you were talking in the last piece about not making a mistake mm -hmm. how, how is it about you know what if you make a mistake do you don't have an option of st removing stitches without it being noticeable right well, I made a huge boo-boo, a huge boo-boo on this one. And even, like, you can't see it in this picture, but even in real life, I know where it is, but in real life, people have to look very hard to find it. And what I found um, helped is because when, when a, the needle makes a, a stitch, it makes a permanent hole. This is literally skin, right? So that hole is there, and it really can't be repaired. So, um what I did was I took some leather glue and I took it and I let it sit over top of the holes and the glue dries clear, but you can't feel it. So I filled the holes so you could still see the holes, but now they're completely smooth. You can't feel them. And then I custom mixed up a little bit of paint that I could match as close as possible to the lavender color of the leather. It's just acrylic paint. And then I painted right over top of those areas because now the holes are smooth. So um, 
it was some experimenting and yeah, I literally stitched this huge section of the main design in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So there is some fixing. Um I I mean you definitely take a deep but you quilted on some leather too, and you definitely take a deep breath before you take your first stitch. You're like, okay, here we go. <laughs> yep. Hey, some of us do that with just cotton. <laughs> Regular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, do you want me to zoom in on the area that I fixed so you can see it? Yeah, that would be cool. All right, let's see if I can do that. I will. Oh, but I can't pan. Oh, yes, I can. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Look at us doing this technology, doing life. Can you see right over here? Can you see where my mouse is? Yeah, behind our pictures. The picture on the recording, it should be okay. Okay. Um, so over on the right hand side, I'm trying to make it bigger, but I don't want to. Right here, you can see that it looks uh, a little bit a little darker. darker. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the line actually went out into the squares all the way into this area in here. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was a big section. So this is the most noticeable area because I didn't paint mm -hmm. in that area. Uh, or like, I sorry, I did paint, but I didn't put the iridescent on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the iridescent helped to hide it even more. But um, it's really hard to see when you're, when you're in person to find it. So, you know, when you look at it from further back, you wouldn't know. Right. There are ways. Yeah. Okay. I have to make this all the way small again so I can go to the next picture. Oh, mine are all happen to be first. Um, this is another piece of leather. <laughs> um, and stitched very, very densely on the outside edge with that match stick quilting. And I'll zoom in again on this one too, because in here in the dragon scales in the body, mm -hmm. that has a, a good loft. It's probably a half an inch of lift off of the base at least. And all those scales are quilted first, kind of like a uh, trapunto. So they're quilted first, and then I trimmed everything away from the back. And then I put the piece back down on, on the machine and quilted the second time just around the outside edge of the body. So, so I'm going to enter. Is that an actual highlight in the photo or did you paint that highlight on there? I do have paint on this one. Um, I have a, uh, on the body itself, I wanted it to be a little bit more of a, uh, an orangey red. So mm -hmm. I put a, a almost sheer like a translucent with a little bit of an orange fleck um, paint over top of the body. And then the rest of it has a darker, more of a blue, purple, red um, so, stain. But like the white area on the tail and his claw and his shoulder, is that actual highlight from a light or is that paint? That highlight on the body is just light from the sheen. Oh, cool. from the, yeah. So but up on the eye and his... I don't know, do you call horns on a dragon? His, you know, those Pokies. things. Pokies. <laughs> the pokies up top. Those, those are, it's all the rest of it. Like the white and the black is all acrylic. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, lots of fun to experiment. And that one's about 30 inches square. Very nice. So here's a couple pictures. They look just like regular quilts on top, but it's more about what's on the back of them that we wanted to show you guys. Um, this has a, a fireside fleece on the back and it's kind of like a cuddle. Minky is one of the things that people ask about very often about can you quilt with Minky and this is a good a good finish on the top where everything lays nice and smooth. Oh my, we're gonna bounce around a little bit. So I'll refer back to that when we get there. <laughs> I told you these were no particular order and they're all mine first, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, this is cork. Mm -hmm. And I have a picture of it uh, unpainted, so you can just see the texture you can get with it not painted. But then this has got some paint and some crystals starting to be added into it. Um, that's that's a lot of fun to play with too. Okay, so here's the back of that Mickey Mouse kind of quilt. So the stitching mm -hmm. shows really really well, but 
on those backings that are all fuzzy and soft, you want to make sure that they have a stable grain so you can identify what your cross and your lengthwise grain are. So you know how to handle it so it doesn't overstretch. I love the way those look on the back. And oh, that, there's, sorry. that fireside fleece isn't as, I'm going to say the word awful because I'm not a minky fan, but it's better than minky. Oh, um, yes. Stretch wise, right? Yeah. So basically you want to take that piece, if you're not sure if you quilt it, and so my customers will say, can you quilt with this fleece blanket or minky? And I'll, they don't even know sometimes what minky is. Sometimes it's cuddle. So I'll ask them to feel it both ways. And then kind of, you know, if there's like a, feels like a diagonal stretch in every single direction, then I won't put it on my long arm. Because that's, that's more, behaves like more of a true minky where it doesn't have the stability of a grain, right? So nice to work with. So this is the cork before paint. So you can, you can get a lot of texture. It's, it doesn't have the same um, pliability or softness as the leather does. So I think the leather, because it's skin and it stretches a little bit, you get a little bit more dimension than you do with the cork. But it's still fun to, and our my gamel just quilted through it like butter. It was uh, really easy to do. Okay, I can take a break. <laughs> <laughs> this one's mine. Um, and it's leather too. Um, you know, there were all kind of things about, you know, I actually bought the leather needles that you're supposed to use. Um, but when it was time, I kind of totally forgot I even bought them and I didn't use them. I just used my regular, I think I use a four, which I don't even know what that is number wise. Um, 18. And it quilted totally fine. I mean, no problems at all. Nothing. I mean, no tension issues. And I think I mostly used, um, Omni on this and it is very stretchy. That was the one thing that I noticed the most is that it's very stretchy. Um, it was nice to try it. Will I do it again? <laughs> Probably not, but <laughs> yeah, it was neat to try it and it smells really good when you're quilting it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is, this is my trifecta of weird things. <laughs> this has a designer silk on it. It has two different colors of lame and it's a sateen. The black is sateen. So yeah, um, many of these pieces of lame were actually ripped off and put back on because you it's the same thing. You can't make a mistake with a lame and it was a headache, but it, it turned out nice. <laughs> Does the lame uh, tend to splice as you're stitching over oh, yeah. it? Every time the needle hits it, it just opens the whole seam line just uh, opens right uh, up. Wondering. So did you, so you didn't stabilize the lame? N not at that point in my life. Now I would totally stabilize it. But, but I wanted because to it probably would, uh, help with the splicing just a little bit. Yeah. Not the, the splicing necessarily, but what happens when it splices? Mm -hmm. You know, you wouldn't get the same if it was stabilized, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It, it looks great. And, you know, the fun part is to try these different materials. And it's trial and error. Sometimes it works. And some, but if you didn't try it, how boring would it be? You know? Right. And then, we, yeah, we wouldn't have all these funny stories about our quilts. So. <laughs> How big is this, Karen? Uh, it's about 36 by 36. It's very pretty. And the thread yeah. played a bigger part because it just, it, it looked like it was just hanging out on all that, that sateen. So then I framed it out yeah. with thread. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and you did you use that lame for the binding too? No, that's the silk. Yeah. Oh, that's the silk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Our cut, we had to pick from four colors of lame. It was a challenge and it was pink, blue, gold, Oops. and silk. Sorry. That's okay. So I found that the silk that had the pink and the blue in it, and I'm like, yeah, bingo. <laughs> <It's a> nice. <laughs> 
So, okay, so this is the um, minky. This is the, the backing that has like stretch in all weird directions. So I have a picture of the back of it and I don't know if it's coming next, but I do have a picture of the top just to show how it doesn't lay as smoothly after it's quilted because some of that fullness kind of gets quilted into, you know, it just moves too much. Mm -hmm. So when the machine's moving around, it, the fabric can stretch underneath and it kind of moves with it and it kind of quilts fullness in different areas, which is kind of strange. We'll see you guys at the top later. <laughs> <laughs> this is mine. Um, and I, I do a fair amount of decorator stuff and it just, I just want you to see, I mean, there's just so many weird fabrics, these decorator fabrics. This is pretty thick. And then that, the circles are actually this, I don't know, it's almost like it was a ribbon that's couched on there when they made the fabric, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was fine because it didn't stick up enough that if you went over it, it wasn't going to like flip it, you know what I mean, to the side or anything. Um, and actually, I didn't actually stitch on any of that part I just outlined them so yeah I think you can pretty much stitch anything mm -hmm. on a long arm I mean you really can it's only when somebody tells you you can't that you start questioning it oh that's the close-up of Le the lame <laughs> yeah you can see a lot of that detail inside there it was the quilting good. Mm -hmm. I tried. The couching is nice too on that. Yeah. So what weight are you using for your couching in there? Oh, that's just 40 weight poly. I use it almost everything. And that was just like a decorative yarn. Okay. Yeah. So this, I have a problem with sateen because um, I got a whole bolt of 108 wide sateen. So this is, the centerpiece is a hand painted from uh, Patui Noor. She used to paint all these different, it's real thick batik. And then I curvy cut it and added sateen to it. And this is another horror story quilt because the bottom right corner um, I didn't have any black batting, so I just started quilting, and you can see where it's all, like, that bottom right's all muddled with the reddish color, because I was trying to hide oh, all my lighter. Yeah. <laughs> I had a bunch of little pokies of batting showing through, so I started to paint it with a pen. Well, because it was sateen, it totally changed, so you saw all these black dots now instead. So I said, hey, let me throw some bleach on here to see what happens. Oh, how bad could it get? So yeah, I put the bleach on and it turned that red color and then I spritzed it with vinegar to stop the bleaching process. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, no, this, it gets worse. The back of this quilt, which I don't have a picture of it. In all that process, I was trying to still fix the messed up little holes. So I said, oh, let me try on the back because some of the bleach had gone through to the back. <laughs> So I went out and got upholstery spray paint and I sprayed the whole back with the upholstery spray paint and that fixed that. And then my quilting didn't really look real nice. So I took an iridescent paint and painted all the feathers. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, and it's Isn't that funny? You wouldn't even notice it if you didn't say anything. Well, yeah, you would have. It was bad. You would. No, the, the original batting holes, I was probably using, I, I get these ideas and it's like, oh yeah, I don't need to change my needle. Let me just go. So it was probably a dull needle with white batting on black sateen. So it was just, I probably should have waited until the next morning when I could go get black batting. <laughs> That's how we learn, right? You know? But it's not something our eyes drawn towards. Like I mean, the center is everything. Yeah, yeah. And this is um, vintage Alfred Shaheen, Shaheen, which is, it's like a really, oh, I'm using words now, oh my goodness. It's like a, um, like a linen-y type fabric almost, so. And but it's hand painted, isn't it? Because yeah. I did actually the same one for that challenge. Yeah. It was very stiff. 
the, where the painting is, it's stiff, but the rest of it's real, like it's an open weave, I guess you'd want to say. So, but it quilted beautifully. It really did. So you quilted on top of some of the hand painted areas. Mm hmm And it was no problem quilting nope. on top of paint. Nope. Because it's old paint. <laughs> it that is. Thank you. Probably wasn't so plastic then. <laughs> oh, this is um I don't even know what this fabric was. And it's almost like a crinkly polyester rayon type. It was real thin and real, like it was, um, it's fashion fabric for clothing. And I painted all the drops. They're made out of the same, but they're, they're um, foundation turned. So they're actually stabilized, but I did not stabilize the back. And it slid all over on that long arm, just everywhere. But um, somebody, whoop. Computer's dropping. Somebody actually um, bought this. So it was amazing. That was a good thing for me. Yeah. It's really neat. Yeah. yeah. It's very realistic. Well, it's, I mm -hmm. did it. Um, Adam Hart Davis actually took the, a photograph and he called it rain. And I sent him, you know, a long email and said I wanted to make a quilt. And then he wanted to see what quilts I'd made. And then he finally said, yeah, you can make it into a quilt. That's great. So you have to get permission when you, you can't just take a picture and just make it. So, yeah. 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 Very cool. But it was a lot of fun up until the slipping. <laughs> and again, this is another decorator one. It was thick. I mean, this was like, it kind of looked like linen on the top, but there was some kind of a backing on the back. Um, yeah, I mean, and then that embroidery stuff is on there, and I just followed the pattern that was there, okay. and uh, mm -hmm. no problems at all, none. You just stitched in the, like, ditched it, like, outlined it, or did you put any fills and stuff no, inside? If you can, no, no, because those, the decorators generally want, like, very, very little, so I actually just followed that loopy pattern across and then followed it back. And did yeah. it go on a bed, or? Uh -huh. Bed spread. Yeah. And it's huge. It was, they're usually like king size. They're gigantic. And then when I take them back to her, they're like, they probably weigh like 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. Not bad. They're super heavy. Jenny, do you ever get, I, I do some, I used to do some stuff for a decorator and they just want straight yardage of quilted fabric. Oh yeah. yeah. We'll get to one that was my absolute favorite. Not. Okay. But. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is lycra, like swimsuit lycra. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> Were you making a swimsuit, Karen? <laughs> no. <laughs> my my friend came over and she says, "Isn't this great?" I said, "Yeah, let's see if we can quilt it." So it was only a test sample. I didn't really do anything with it, but it quilts just fine. It really does. I didn't change my needle, didn't change my thread. We just threw that piece up there and wanted to see what happened. But yeah, you want a quilted bathing suit? It works. <laughs> We're swimming when it's cold. <laughs> it, it won't dry quickly because of the batting, I'm sure. But <laughs> so yeah, you can you can quilt anything, anything. Well, don't say that. <laughs> so this is a piece of antique linen from uh, just an antique store. Sorry, my cat is rubbing up against my computer. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I like to go to the antique stores and just see if there is any like old vintage things. It's just a little like center doily. It's not even really big. It's probably like, I don't know, 20 inches or something. Mm -hmm. And it quilted just fine in the center. Um, it's not finished. It's, that's a picture of it still loaded. And around the edges, um, because that's one of the things people ask a lot. How do you deal with these edges? So there's a piece of fabric underneath mm -hmm. um, so that it shows and peeks up through the holes. And you can actually see my stitching lines where I went right inside mm -hmm. to tack everything down. And then I did the exact same thing just on the outside edge. So this little bit of lace um, stands up just a little bit on the edge. Mm -hmm. And then this 
stitched in here is not stitched at all so it has a little bit more dimension to it but it's kind of nice to experiment with different fabrics underneath just to see what effects they're going to have yeah so they're lots of fun and this is just linen so the one thing i would say about linen is that i was really stressed when i did this because i didn't have the right color thread but linen is so openly the weave is so open and it's thick so when you quilt it the thread on this actually was nothing like a match it didn't even matter because it sinks so far down in you don't see it anyway so that's one thing you don't need to worry too much about the the color match because it will sink in and you barely can see it i see you have some blue markings on there mm -hmm. did those come out as equally well as they do on cotton regular cotton fabric under linen yeah yeah because i just threw this i mean when i'm done with my quilt i just throw it in the washing machine and yeah they were gone and the uh, other question i have is um you said you wash your quilt so how did the linen maintain the integrity of your quilting designs compared to you know regular cotton that's exactly the same normally, you know gets wrinkly like if i think of linen clothing you know i don't buy it because you yeah. it's um, a wrinkly mess no it was fine because i after i wash them then i block them so it made it just look exactly the same i did one though that um and i would never do this again because i didn't know this about linen so it's nice and firm when you buy it you know and it has a really good hand to it and i quilted the entire quilt was all of the background once you wash it it's never coming back so it looked nice and it went perfectly flat but when you hang it it has no body anymore and there was no way to add it back in so it just hangs like it's yeah i would never use it for the whole thing again So this is probably my biggest horror story, story quilt. And um, it's the blue is sateen. All the black is velveteen. The pink and the silver are dupioni silk. Um, you know, I made it. I knew you had to wash the pink because it could bleed. And I washed it a couple of times, actually. And I tested it with the wet thing and the ironing and it was good. So I washed the quilt and it was okay even when I pulled it out until I laid it on the thing and blocked it. And every time I looked at it, the pink was leaching out farther and farther and farther into the blue. Uh. So I washed it more <laughs> and the problem with that is that sateen doesn't do well with being washed a lot and it gets like these fuzzy it just isn't nice anymore and i ended up washing it so so many times and the center parts this gray it was gray but that pink bled into the gray silk so as a last resort because dummy me already entered it into the show i had to get silver paint and paint all of this the silk silver and it's quite crunchy yeah. and they told me that in my comments yeah your quote is a little crunchy i'm like yeah i know <laughs> so that was bad it's pretty but yeah it's and i tried to cover up the the bleed with more thread someone suggested just stitch more there it'll hide it yeah it just said look at me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm bleeding and have lots of, of lots of thread yeah that was bad that's a fine line because you want to you want to keep the eye away and the more you do it tends to pull the eye in yeah. more mm -hmm. yeah yeah it is nice though <laughs> yeah So this is the worst. This is yardage. This was 11 yards of my, of um, ultra suede that yeah. it was for a decorator. 
there's no backing and there's no batting. It was just the micro suede, ultra suede. Well, I don't know what it was, but as she gives it to me, she tells me that the customer imported it from Italy and it was hundreds of dollars. And I'm like, what? I don't even want to touch it. I mean, and it was for a couch to recover a couch. And these grid lines had to match up with grid lines that were somewhere else on the couch. And she wanted me to mark this all. And I said, absolutely not. I'm not marking 11 yards of fabric with that. And I'm not putting any kind of marking on that fabric. So the deck, the, the client marked it and it was quite poorly marked, but I stitched exactly what he marked and he didn't like it after. But they were his lines that I stitched, mm -hmm. but it stitched beautifully because it was just you know, but 11 yards worth of 60 wide. That with a ruler was not a lot of fun. Stitched fine, but it was horrible. Yeah, I didn't I, even realize this was stitched. To me, it just looked like it was perforated with a needle. Like you went with it over it with a needle yeah. and no thread. And there's only one spot I can see that looks like it no. actually well, got it thread in it. Yeah. The thread was a perfect match, so that was a good thing. But yeah, yeah. You, it it's was bad. I've used the moleskin as a backing, and I loved it. Yeah, I call it moleskin. It's the ultra suede. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I want to say that stuff was probably an eighth of an inch thick. It was really thick, but wow. yeah. Um, and then this is mine, and it's it's Dupioni silk, but I wanted to show this because you can stitch on it fine. I again, anything I've I never change my needle. I always use just the four, always stitched fine. But I wanted to see. So in my mind, you know, it has the slubs that run all in one direction. Mm -hmm. So I assume that I should probably quilt the direction of those slubs in order for the quilting to show. So on the left, I did um, you know, some angled ones to see how well they showed before I started quilting the quilt. And it turns out the one on the right is better. If you go against the, if the slubs in the silk are running this way and you stitch mm -hmm. this way, you barely see the lines. But if you do against them, it shows really well. Like the bottom is with them and the top on the right is against them. Look yeah, it's almost that. like the thread in your stitching is competing with them. Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of a, an interesting thing to figure out. And uh, it you made know, a it difference. brings out the, the fun part or the nice part of the fabric by making it, by making it more visible, you know? Right. Yeah, it's definitely a big difference. Yeah. Okay, so we've seen a whole bunch of pictures so far of all these unusual fabrics, and we have a whole lot more. Um, but first, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. Hi, this is Andrew with Gamel. Today, I'd like to show you the easy way to install and remove your extended throat plate. The first thing we're going to do is set our horizontal and vertical channel lock so the machine doesn't roll around. Then take the groove of the plate and slide it down the hopping foot. Put one hand underneath and with three fingers press down on the spring as you push the plate back and wiggle it. It will easily snap into place. Now for removal, the key is to lift the back of the plate up a little bit. Then take three fingers underneath the spring, pull the spring towards you, and the plate slides off easily. Welcome back, everyone. We are ready to jump right into another group of pictures. Um, and this one's mine. And this is quilted on Radiance, which is a cotton and silk blend. Um, the one big thing I would suggest with this fabric, it stitches fine. I mean, any thread work, for, in my experience, what I've tried, all different threads work, um, the needle. I would say that it's a good idea to have a sharp brand new needle because if you don't it can pull like a thread if you hit it with a doll needle um, and other than that I I did interface this because it just makes it easier 
I find it's not going to shift and slide around because it is pretty um, shifty, I guess. And I think that's it for the radiance. And then this is just, I collect these vintage linens. Um, they're usually not I mean, they're cotton, some of them, but they're thicker. This is almost like it borders between a canvas and a sateen. It almost has the weave of a sateen. But again, I mean, it's stitched fine. I didn't interface it. It was a little bit shifty, but I just stitched it, and it, was, it worked great. So these ones... If you, I don't know if you can see on the hexagon one, the weave. These are vintage linens as well, but these were meant to be curtains. So you can see the weave. It's really weird and thick and kind of open. Um, but I mean, I just quilt them. I, it doesn't matter if they're really an open weave. I would just put some um, fusible interfacing on the back and then you can quilt anything. I love the OGs. <laughs> They're like squared OGs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so have you quilted this piece, Ben? No, because I want to applique on it before I quilt it. What are you going to put on that? I don't this is a secret. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I have ideas, but gosh, yeah, it's been in my cupboard for years now, Sharon. So <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day, one day we'll see it in your in your Facebook feed. Maybe. And that one, I will say, has some very thick paint on it. It feels like one of those, oh gosh, like, like a t-shirt, t old style t-shirts where it's like rubber. That's what that paint is like. So we'll hmm. see. That's going to be awesome when you do it. Oh, <laughs> this was another challenge. <laughs> and um, that blue fabric is like from the dollar a yard table. And it's, it's, um, I guess more clothing fabric because all those lines that I quilted are almost like only one thread of fabric. So it was a, a, a woven fabric. And then there's lots and lots of just manual couching in it like a zigzag over all kinds of fibers and yarns to make the ground. And That's then I chose, I chose to bind it with that same <laughs> knit thing. Yeah. That was bad, but it, like I said, you can just about quilt anything and it still comes out pretty cool. But this is not a little, this is like, I don't know, 12 by 12. We did a whole series of different, different styles with the same image. So. That's cute. Yeah. That's cute. And this is Armani silk that was dyed and it, it's interfaced because it's very, it's a different texture silk. I guess you'd say, but it's very slippery and, and um, the the more open weave than normal silks. So, but it was really it was it quilted fine once it was stabilized. Well, yeah. To give us an idea, um, a sense of perspective on this, some of these little little swirl sections are really really small. Like they're only like wide. Half, inch, half inch wide. The whole piece is only thirty three inches. Yeah, so these are small. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was one some 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 ribbons, hasn't it? A couple. Yeah. That was the first thing I faced, Ava. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, this is the top of the fire. Uh, not the fireside, but the minky backing. The one I just one. Yeah, with all the bumps and dimples, you wow. can just see the extra bit of fullness on top of this quilt, and it's a it's just a good illustration of why we why those things don't behave. If you're quilting on your domestic machine and you're moving everything around, there's no tension on the quilt sandwich at all. As soon as you put it on the frame, there's tension on the fabric, and so it's really difficult to stop it from moving around with the machine so i mean you definitely see the difference it looks in i you know want to be nice it looks very lumpy 
but in comparison to when it means that in a nice way, right? <laughs> but when you know, in comparison to the fireside, mm -hmm. um, it that looked very crisp on the back. Whereas you know, when we saw the back side of this earlier, you mm -hmm. could already tell that there was none of that crispness. So it, you know, it's not surprising to see that that's what it looks like on the top. You know, it's a shame because if we don't know what effects those fabric can have, you know, somebody could get mighty disappointed because they yeah. have good intentions. They yeah. want it to be snugly, and it is. It just, you know, I'm sure it's a very snugly. But oh, it'll be you know, it'll be super cuddly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and soft, but yeah, it, it changes the, the finished look on the surface for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Oh, this is mine. So this was something I found in Walmart, and it's just cool because it looks like metal somehow. I don't know, but it's super sheer. But I just wanted, like, I just bought it because I thought I'm going to see if I can quilt it. And yeah, quilt's awesome. It's pretty cool. So don't be afraid, you know, and the thing is, stuff like that's usually in the clearance thing for like two bucks a yard and... Because nobody else knows what to do with it, right? Right. So, <laughs> yeah, I figure I'll try it. Yeah. It almost looks like aluminum foil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, this is what I, what I use on my silk fabrics. I also use it on radiance, too, because it's super thin and it's like a knit. So it's just Pellon um, by Stretch Light. That's what I stabilize silks with. I've not tried that one. I like it. I, I like it. It doesn't change. It doesn't change the hand of it. It's still. Yeah. It's still. I the different one. It's also by Pellon, and I think it's called SP One O One. It looks like a fabric. Mm -hmm. um, it's woven and it is fusible and it's I, still thin. It's not as thin as this looks. I've used that behind my hand embroideries. Yeah. Yeah, I do as well. You're right. It works great for that also. Yeah. Yeah, I've not tried that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is mine. I am, I am in no way a fan of Menke at all. None of it. No. And this is why. Because that stuff was, I mean, it's awful. That fuzz is everywhere. And it hangs around for a really long time because you think you got it all. <laughs> stuff <laughs> is just, no, I, I don't care for it myself. And that's why. When I have cut with that, I'll take it outside to the picnic table in the yard and I'll cut it outside and give it a good shake out before I bring it back in. And there's still, there's still stuff inside. It's awful. Yeah. Not a fan. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a good picture. <laughs> oh, this is, um, this is one of my quilts. The whole thing is Silk Dubioni. And it's actually painted. So even the feet are silk dupioni, but they're painted. And then some thread play on it. I'm going to see if I can get into the feet. That was my goal, to totally use all dupionis on it. So even the wood grain? Mm -hmm. That's all you painted. You painted that. Mm -hmm. Wow. All awesome. the feathers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His beak. Yeah. This is pretty cool because I'm seeing stuff that I've never seen from you guys before. And that's neat. And this one just tells you not to, not to listen to all judges' opinions. Because this, this was judged awfully. Awfully. <laughs> <laughs> but a judge actually told me to cut the top six inches off my quilt and it would do better. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. Another judge told me it looks like they're startled. I'm like, they were startled. When I walked up to take the picture, they were startled. <laughs> Just, yeah. I, and I like to tell people that because some people take all these criticisms and critiques to heart. Those are totally opinions, you know? Yeah. 
I don't think they look startled. They look like they're just chilling on the dock. Yeah. No. Yeah, and how do you know what a startled bird looks like? I mean, yeah. <laughs> and then there's comments that I actually included the bird poo, and I'm like, yeah, have you seen a fishing dock? It looks like that. <laughs> yep, covered. Covered, yeah. Oh, hi, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Some pictures in. We saved the best for last. <laughs> yeah, not necessarily. But yeah, that's leather. And that was um, my first actual quilt that I, you know, quilted on leather. And I have to second what Jody said. I think we went to the booth to buy the leather at the same time, if I remember correctly. And I also got drawn into buying the needles and all that. And just like Jody, I forgot to switch needles because I never changed the size of my needles. I always use an 18. Um, so, it, you know, my 18s work just great. Now, on this design, I had to mark it. And I have to admit, I did buy the leather, special leather marking pen, which is white. Um, like paint almost. However, I couldn't find it when it was time to do this project. So I used um, wash away, which really didn't wash that well off the leather. So I had to literally soak that whole thing to get, which I was worried about because it's leather and I thought it would crack. It held up fine. I did find my white leather pen and that definitely works great um, for another piece I found it and that is definitely a tool you will need if you're planning on marking on leather because it literally wipes right off. So, Ava, the, you use the 4.0 needle. Are the leather needles thicker, smaller, thinner? No, I use the, the actually the 18 is a 4.5. Okay. No. But, oh, is it? Mm. No? No, I think 84. But is the leather needle, the one, did you, did you like look at them side by side, what, what the difference was? Or no? uh, They look the same to me. They have I a, think it has a, like a blade, like, I think it like, yeah. isn't it? Well, I, I have a picture of the package that I um, will sometimes use, mm -hmm. and maybe we can, I don't know if you can save that for then, but it's the same needle width, but it's the tip has got, um, it's a, like a triangle at the base. So it's like, it's called a diamond tip. So okay. it's points all the way around. Because what happens with the leather, because it has um, stretch to it, is when, when the needle's coming back up out of the leather, pulls it. You can, if you're stitching slowly enough, you can actually see the leather grab the sides of the needle and kind of tent up with it. Mm -hmm. And um, you have less of that with um, with the diamond tip needle. However, I've only found that on the finer leathers, like so really soft and supple leathers, like lamb, for mm -hmm. example. Some of the heavier, um, the, like the a cowhide, I I just use my regular eighteen needle. But as soon as you start to see that that pulls up with it, so I have both of the needles, and I use the leather ones when, like the diamond tip ones, when I know. I can see that leather kind of just pulling. Okay. It's, it's, you know, like one of those case by case basis, you use your judgment when you're in that scenario and you have it on hand. Great. If you don't even notice it, then this looks great too. Right? Yeah. I have a whole deer hide that I'm waiting to pull and I'll just pick all your brains until <laughs> I'm ready to do it. <laughs> yeah. Have fun with the stretch. Oh, there they are. So oh, okay. I, I didn't actually uh, have a picture of the needle itself out, but the tip is, it's a, it's a diamond tri a triangle tip. I think that's what the D stands for, it's diamond. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a four, it's an 18, size 18, which is a four. So you can change the size. I think you can go from 16 to 19 with leather, but I just stick with my 18. That way, if I forget to take this needle out when I go back to a regular quilt, it doesn't change any, you know, it doesn't change any worse. So 
So these are some of the other leather tools. Um, this, that's the leather marking pen. Um, it is just like a, pretty much behaves like a clover uh, white marking pen, except with the clover white marking pen, it takes a few seconds for the line to appear. Mm -hmm. With this leather marking pen, it appears right away. And it's like a roller ball. Um, and it wipes off nicely. Um, above at the top is the Sorrel transfer paper. And so it's just like any other transfer paper. Um, but it comes with a clear um, sheet on top. So you can actually draw your design on the clear sheet. And then when you place it down, I just use one of those manicure tools that you can, you know, paint like dots and flowers and things on your nails. Um, and I, it's got a little ball on the end and I just use that to trace my design uh, to transfer over. And then once that transfer paper, I've used that, then I go with the leather pen and mark over top of some of the areas that I might have missed. Um, the needles. And then on the right there, you can see I've experimented with the word leather uh, and how well I'm able to wipe off different things. And those are actually gel pens. Okay. You can use gel pens to mark your leather and it wipes right off. But anything, just like your regular quilting fabric, I would just test it out on a small piece first and make sure that you can wipe it off right away. That would be smart. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us like to test after the fact. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I have a whole, in that whole little stack there, there's metallic and there's all different kinds of hides in there. And not everything works on every leather. Yeah. So, but the gel pen works on almost all of them. So like the cheapy dollar store gel pens. Um, and then I use the, just a regular leather shoe polish and a brush to get some shine happening. Mm -hmm. You can just apply it with a paper towel and then go over it with the brush, just like your shoes. So. <laughs> I have to polish my quilt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and so the top picture with the little fish, was just uh, to see how many coats of acrylic paint it would take to get a nice solid color. So obviously top left, there's no paint. And then going towards the right, one coat, two coat, and then three, four, five. That's five coats of paint to be able to get it to be that vibrant. You would think you put that first bit of yellow on and you look at the second fish, it doesn't, when it dries, it's pretty light. So you do have to do several coats, but um, it does work well. And the bottom is stain. Um, so that's, that's a dye. And um, on the bottom right hand corner of that piece, you can see all the little spots of test because all of the dyes are going to react different with all of your leather. So just because you use this dye on leather A doesn't mean it's going to behave the same on leather B. So I do a little test out to see what the you know, to see what my, my result I'm going to want. And then sometimes you mix them together too. So it's kind of fun. So does that acrylic paint stay on there? Like if you were to make a, let's say a, a purse or a bag mm -hmm. and you painted those, would it just stay or? Well, you can buy an acrylic uh, sealer to put over top. And so if it was going to be something like a bag that would probably get lots of like brushing up against and wear, yeah. I'd probably want to seal it. Um, and depending on whether you wanted to have any sheen or not too, because you can get, um, some of those in a matte finish and then some with some semi-gloss and then shiny. So if it was going to be on a wall, you might want it to have some sheen. Um, okay. so it's there for aesthetics, not, you know, protecting it. So, but yeah, you could definitely seal them. Hmm. Um, that's an antique linen tablecloth or table topper that I um, wanted to try quilting. And uh, you don't see the whole picture of it. But I also, like I think Sharon showed earlier with her linen or vintage doily, that I did also lay it onto another fabric. And I think at the time Jody had suggested that I try like a polyester, putting it on polyester. And I did try it, and then I tried it on regular cotton fabric. And even though it looked 
pretty with the polyester shining through or you know being visible through the holes in the in the topper i just thought it it took away from that antique look so i chose to go with the regular cotton behind it and not the sheen so you know we all have um our own things that we see in our head but it was fun to work it with it you know yeah and so it was a even, gift for my mom sorry. and she was quite happy so these areas in here uh in that center ring around your center uh -huh. piece, that's that is that laced where you can yep. see through yeah yeah, and I did exactly what you did on yours, you know, that I just followed, you know, the outline of the lace in order for it to stand out. Mm -hmm. I didn't do any special trapanto techniques, but just by, you know, stitching or ditching around those elements, you can see it here a little bit, it still is, you know, you still have the texture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really pretty. Thank you. And that's just another experiment with leather. And one thing that um, we haven't talked about when we do a leather quilt, or when I did that green one you saw a piece of earlier, one of the hardest things was to do the binding. Um, you know, using the leather strips because of the stretch. I mean, and the bulk. I'm, yeah, to do, I, I actually, you know, I couldn't get the corners to miter for nothing. I just ended up doing this, this square fold over, you know, corners on that. But, you know, I enjoyed quilting on the leather because I think Jody said it early, it smells really good. And, <laughs> you know, you can get the texture, you know, and the definition of the stitches, it's just very, very pretty. So I might do some more leather. And that this one here would be a good one to go in and put some of the, I don't know if you like iridescent or not, Karen and I do. <laughs> but I, I'm just like, oh, I want to paint those feathers. I want to put some sheen on them and make them glow and come alive. I have <laughs> experimented with paint. That's one of the things I have not done because I'm not very good at the, you know, the shading stuff like that. You know, I, I'm kind of scared. I guess I should give it a try because it's just a little piece and experiment with it. You're right. Mm -hmm. I, yep. I had heard all of the binding stories from Jody and Ava on their pieces. So that's why I bought the whole deer skin. It's just going to hang all weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No my, binding necessary. <laughs> my leather dragon the, on the red one, I faced that. Mm -hmm. So that's an option. You can face it. And if you have more of that facing fabric or leather wrapped around to the back, it helps to hold that. So it, it's faced. And then the purple one, the lavender one that I did, I actually cut and measured this and cut the strips and cut a miter into the corner and glued those down. Yeah, that's what I did too. But I sewed the strip onto the front because I just couldn't bring myself to glue it front and back. I'm like, no, it just doesn't. So like, whatever, I cut it this long. It was as long as the quilt. And I started and sewed and sewed. When I got to the end, there was like this much hanging past because it was so stretchy. And I'm like, well, let's just cut it off, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, that well, was a challenge. I also tried to glue mine. I sewed it on by machine to the front, you know, and then glued it. And then I had the bright idea of using the wonder clips to let the glue dry so it was nice and, you know, well. Two days later, it had all these indents in the leather, and now I'm standing there rubbing and smoothing and trying to get those indents. <laughs> trying to massage them out. <laughs> it was yeah. horrid. Talk about learning curve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, yeah. that's what you get when you wait till a day before the deadline, <laughs> of course, to finish it, not knowing what you're doing, but that's okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, this is wool 
we haven't talked about wool yet. And this one, um, it's one of my uh, customer quilts. She does only wool and she uses the wool in the background, wool applique and then all that gazillion, you know, decorative stitches. So, you know, the, the key with the wool, and I know Sharon, you've done some wool also that, you know, because with the decorative stitches, it's so thick, it builds up because you have layer upon layer of wool. Sometimes mm -hmm. four layers, the backing is often wool also. Um, you, if you want to detail some of that, then you literally, I learned, have to start in the center first and work your way out. Because if you do your fill first and the wool pushes on the, from the outside against all those layers, there's no way you can, can get in there. Now, of course, you know, if you have the set of the Gamel uh, Quick Change feet, then you can use the little itty bitty trapunto foot, uh, trapunto foot to get in there, you know. And, um, but if not, then you, I recommend you start detailing from the center out. And a lot of times you can't get to the very center at all. So, but it's just you know, and 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 with the wool, if it's used as the background. Um, you want to, you know, it, it, if you have a thin wool batting in there, it really shows off the stitching, the texture still, even on the wool, because obviously that's a natural fiber. Um, and so the stitching shows up differently than on regular cotton. It's very nice and rich. Do you find on the back when you're quilting the backgrounds, if there's some fullness in some areas, they just disappear once you go around them a couple of times with some pebbles or something, not like a regular fabric. It just, I don't know, it just seems to cooperate really, really well for the background quilting. But uh, um, in regards to the wool, I do want to say um, if it's really a lot of wool applique, you can definitely feel it in your body because it seems like you're pushing the machine a lot harder than if you're going over cotton fabric. Mm -hmm. So you've done a lot of wool quilts. Mm, it, <laughs> it gets to you after a while. I do and, on some of them that are really thick layers. I will raise my hopping foot slightly mm -hmm. for some of That's, those. But you got to know how to put it back before you... Yep. Before you lift it up, you have to know how to fix it before you do it. Because I have done actually a lot, a lot of, because I'm in Ohio and Sue Spoigo, who does a lot of, you know, the wool applique, a lot of people here do them. So I've done a lot of them. So that's one of the reasons why my hopping foot is actually always a little bit higher ah. and I don't even change it. Uh, you know, it's just enough to be okay on any type of quilt, but enough to get into those wool applique areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I wanted to experiment with the leather to use the Elevate to stitch out the design. I wanted to see, you know, how the computer part, you know, how accurate it would be going around those circles, you know, on the leather compared to other materials. And as you can see, it worked just fine. It, it's just something I wanted to try. So mm -hmm. it looked cool. Okay, so that's all our pictures. Ooh, that's <laughs> a lot of pictures. Even more. <laughs> I loved that little show of, of all your guys' stuff. Well, yeah. it show everybody who's watching this that don't be afraid, even with our trial and errors that we obviously all go through. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's what makes quilting so so much fun, you know, because it's never the same. There's always something new to try out, you know, and you don't have to make a king size quilt when you're experimenting. 
you know, you do a small sample size and it's mm -hmm. fun. Okay, so I guess that brings us to the end of this episode. And I hope, I mean, you know, you can learn from our mistakes and <laughs> not be afraid to maybe try some fabrics that you've been maybe a little worried about trying and, you know, go have fun and experiment with different fabrics. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.